Hello guys, welcome back. This is our second video on the refrigeration technology. Uh, we're going to start by remembering the kernel cycle that we discussed last class and uh, the way that we believe that we can build our paper compression cycle. So what we're going to start do doing is we are, remember we are completing this um, this is our vapor or kernel trying to use some material phase change, right? And uh, we said that we have the same problems that we have in the in the ranking cycle. We not we cannot compress two phases. We don't want to expand phases. So what we're going to do is we're going to extend this until we have saturated vapor. And this is a line of constant pressure. And uh, we're going to extend this second constant pressure. So what we're going to do is we're going to extend this line here. Then we have saturated vapor we can start compressing. This is a vertical line. Let me just change that. So this is where to climb. You cannot see that light. So we're to climb. Uh, we would like to do the same here. Then we recognize that we cannot use a turbine, so what we're going to use is expansion valve. That expansion valve will create some entropy. So we're going to change this a little bit. This will be one, two, three, four. So um, we said that this would be our ideal vapor compression cycle. So Paper compression cycle, I'm going to change this slide a little bit. Um, we start with a saturated paper. We compress it as a isentropic linear compressor. Then we have an isothermal heat rejection. Well, we have heat rejection. This portion is not isothermal. This portion it is. Until we get saturated liquid and then we expand it. In the state, as the entrance of the evaporator, we will have a mixture of liquid and vapor, and then we are going to add some heat. So what we're going to do differently is that we are going to introduce here the temperatures, the temperatures of the reservoirs. So the first temperature will be our cold temperature reservoir. We have something, let's say, it here. This is TL. And I will try to do it as straight as I can. So what I will have is uh, heat coming from this temperature to the evaporator. I am transferring heat from a high from from a higher temperature with this TL. To a lower temperature. This is my saturation temperature. Okay, I will change this name and I will say that this is T F standing for the temperature of the evaporator. Okay, remember naturally heat. Oh my god, heat will go from the high temperature to the low temperature and this high temperature could be uh, very cold but it's higher than this temperature which is even colder now how can we adjust the evaporation temperature by adjusting the pressure right so this line here is evaporation pressure and then we're going to compress it until a temperature that is above 
high temperature reservoir so I will create this line this is my TH and I will try again draw it as straight as I can you see that I have problems with that we do it a little bit smaller I mean lower so I can draw an arrow there so I have here my TH So this temperature H is a lower temperature than the saturation temperature of the condenser. I will name this temperature T con. And it's higher temperature than the ambient, let's say. So that way I will have some transfer from the high temperature to the low temperature. This is QH. QL, QH. Um, this way, uh, this will be a constant pressure. It will be the condensing pressure. One thing that you should recognize here is that each of these elements is in a steady state. So we can analyze using first law of thermal for open systems. Hopefully you remember the first law of thermal for open systems. Okay, so in this animation we see the four elements of the compression cycle we see in one. We start with some vapor that we go into the compressor. This compressor will increase its pressure and temperature to get to the state two. Here we have superheated vapor. We introduce that uh, superheated vapor to condenser, where it will release heat to an ambient, uh, and as it's circulating to the condenser, is condensing, changing from saturated vapor to from superheated vapor to saturated liquid, uh, sometimes subcool. Then we will have the expansion valve. We're going to reduce the pressure of that liquid, and uh, we're going to introduce a mixture of vapor and liquid into the evaporator. Uh, here, the arrow should be the other way. Uh, the heat will come into the evaporator to evaporate that liquid, absorbing heat from the environment. And as a result, we're gonna finish with a uh, ideal with a saturated vapor and then complete the cycle. We're gonna analyze one of our elements, and that element we change the color to purple. So uh, analyzing the elements, let's say we are doing the evaporator. Since it's an open system, we are going to start and uh, we are going to neglect uh, potential energy, kinetic energy, and potential energy changes. So for an open system, we will have Q in minus Q out uh, plus work in minus work out plus the mass flow rate we are going to use only um, one mass flow rate so it's each element has only one inlet and one outlet uh, H in minus H out equals to the change of energy in the system with respect of time. Uh, we remember that uh, this is zero because it's a steady state. For the evaporator, 
we know that we don't have any work in or work out. Another heat that we are having to the system is heat in. Heat is leaving our food, heat is leaving our, uh, the temperature of our car and it's going into the evaporator, so we don't have any work out. And uh, because of this, we can't um, remember that inlet is one is four. Let's say inlet and one is the outlet. We can uh, compute Q in. It's equal to mass flow rate times H one minus H four. This is in kilowatts. Another way of doing it will be specific in the terms of uh, per kilogram basis. So this will be uh, H1 minus H4, and this will be expressed in kilojoules per kilogram. So you see it's the same analysis that we did with the Brighton and with the Rankine cycle, and then evaporator and condenser, pretty much the same thing. Compressor, we already said in, in this both cycles. The only thing that we have not done is the expansion valve, so we're going to analyze it for the expansion valve. The expansion valve is process for, sorry, is process three to four. Right, so if we start um, again with our question, general equation, for open systems, And again, we're going to uh, cancel this element of energy because we know that it's a steady state. In our uh, expansion valve, we are not having any war heat or interaction in or out. Since it's not, we are not changing volumes, we are not doing any work. So at the end, the analysis for the heat, the, the expansion valve will be that H in equals H out. In other words, H3 equals H4, that is an isenthalpic process. This doesn't mean that the entropy is constant. Actually, this is a very uh, irreversible process. So, if we analyze the rest of the components, we can see that uh, we can get our COP in terms of enthalpy either for the refrigerator or the heat pump. The only consideration that we should uh, make is um, when we have, well, that will be for the actual soup. Um, usually we can do it in a pH or in a TS diagram. Um, you can uh, identify a number of components that use the refrigeration cycle. We have here the refrigerator. You can see that our freezer is at minus 18. So you want to extract heat from element, from food well, below this minus 18, we should have uh, something that is colder. And this evaporator costs 
as we saw in the last video, is they are at least at minus 26, minus 27, so we have a big delta T. Um, this is the vapor. Let me just go back here, and in order to make sure that we have everything well written down for the four components, we just said for the compressor, the compressor we if we start with the same expression and we can get at the end that the power in will be the mass flow rate times h2 minus h1 or the specific work in will be h2 minus h1 and for the condenser QH will be um, as for rate times H2 minus H3 or in terms of specific uh, the heat will be QH is equal to H2 minus H3. With these four equations, we have our cycle complete and we can analyze it. Um, so, um, why is refrigeration important? Well, we mentioned that we have, uh, and I, I'm going to post the article by Mechanical Engineering stating that refrigeration is one of the big achievements of the 20th century. And you can see why it's uh, pretty much everywhere you can see it in uh, your refrigerator at home, right? Uh, this helps to preserve your food, it's very convenient. If you have been uh, away in the, in the fields, you have been to the country, you can see that if you don't have this refrigerator, you have to either hunt your food daily or you will like to you will need to look for another ways to preserve it, like smoking or salting the, the food. Uh, but it's not only used here, we can you can see that in, in your car where um, when I was young many years ago uh, only the luxury cars had the air conditioning. Now the days here in Croatia you cannot think of your car without air conditioning system. Uh, we can find it in air conditioning system for homes or buildings. We can use it for uh, chillers, uh, and those chillers will provide cold water for some processes or for uh, air conditioning systems. Uh, we use it for industrial chambers where we uh, store food for months before we can um, uh, send it to the supermarket so to the consumer will get it. But it's not only these three uh, or four uses. Nowadays, supercomputers will need some refrigeration system in order to accept all the heat that these superprocessors can get. They, they can get a very high temperature. Uh, so next video, we are going to talk about uh, some problems and then some uh, the actual baby compression system. Thank you.